I am a admin on a couple of social media groups associated with the Rogue Glide. And I'm also in some other Rogue Glide social media groups or forums. And it, it's, it's strange. Everybody seems to have the same questions. And they all deal with the technology around this motorcycle. Specifically, how do I change the screen from black to white? How do I customize my ride mode? How do I attach a phone to the bike so that I can listen to music or use CarPlay? It, it, all of those things keep coming up over and over again. And I thought it would be good just to do a quick video that shows you kind of step by step how to do all that. So that's what we're going to do today. What's up? Jim here. Welcome back to J Street Moto. Welcome to the channel if it's your first time. Do me a favor. If you like what I'm doing, like it. Subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything new and share it with your friends. All that stuff's free for you and it helps my channel. This is my 24 Rogue Glide. Her name's Fia, if you haven't been on the channel before. If you've been to a Harley dealership recently and you've seen any of the 24s, whether the Street Glides or Rogue Glides, they both have the same thing in common. One is they no longer have an ignition accessory on off switch, period. They just don't. So if you want to put this bike in accessory mode, it's very easy to do, and this works for the street glide as well. You use the multi-function button up here, hold it for about 10 seconds, and the infotainment center will turn on. The bike will go into accessory mode. First thing I'm gonna point out is, and this is gonna be critical, this button is your menu. And then the back arrow. And then you're gonna use these four arrows and this middle button to access all the menu items on the bike when you're trying to change these settings. So we're just gonna go into it and start from the top, right? So if you go into settings, which is this cog up in the upper left-hand corner, if you go in there, first setting is device manager. This is where you are going to pair all of the devices that you're gonna to connect to this bike. Here is what you can connect to the motorcycle. You can connect a phone. Doesn't matter what kind of phone it is, as long as it supports Bluetooth, you're gonna be able to connect the phone to the bike. And if you're playing music through the phone, it will play through these speakers. Now, if you want to be able to control the phone when you're riding, you have to have CarPlay, plain and simple. You gotta have CarPlay, you gotta have an Apple phone. I've, I've heard some rumblings in the community that there's a way to get Android's version of CarPlay to work. I haven't seen anything specifically that tells me that is the case. I've also seen a couple of different options for how to make CarPlay work on this bike. Uh, there's a very cheap option that plugs into this jack that is for charging your phone basically um that is not the solution i went with if you go back and look at uh my carplay hack video uh, i tell you what tim henry from tim stereo solutions sent me uh that plugs in underneath your rear seat and it creates what the bike thinks is a bluetooth headset you capture it in the device manager and you tell it that it's the rider and all of a sudden your CarPlay starts working. And it will work if your phone is plugged in and charging or if your phone's in your pocket and you're doing it via Bluetooth as long as you have the phone connected to the bike. The other things you can connect are two helmets. You can connect the rider helmet and you connect the passenger helmet. So you can connect a couple of helmets to it, you can connect a phone to it. And all those things can be connected at the same freaking time. I'm gonna show you how to connect those now. You go into the device manager from the settings. If you didn't see me get there, I went 
This is the main menu when you hit the hamburger button. That's the device manager, it's the first one there. When you click it, you can see all the devices that I've paired to this bike via Bluetooth. So I have my wife's helmet, my helmet, my phone, and the device that Tim sent me from Tim Stereo Solutions. When you add a device, you have an option to connect it to change the role. When it says change role, what it's talking about is whether that device is the rider or it's the passenger. And that's very important because anything you connect to the bike via Bluetooth that you want to use CarPlay with has to be assigned to the rider if you're going to cheat it out. Otherwise, it will not work. It doesn't work if it's assigned to the passenger. The other thing you can do when you're there is you can set the connection settings. Now, really, all that the connection settings do is let you choose between whether you want that device to be able to hear the media, so the music that you're playing, and the voice prompts, and they're on or off. Now, if we back out of that, we go back to the main menu. The next one down is sound. Sound's an interesting one because you've got this first option up here called audio routing. Audio routing lets you choose whether you are sending the music to the speakers or the headset. And you select it by just pushing the, the button. When I push this button, it's gonna change it to headset. See? And when I push it again, it changes it back to speakers. Same thing for the prompts. For you guys that have been putting all those questions and comments and shit out on social media about why aren't my speakers working, etc., why am I not getting sound out of my phone, that kind of stuff, you might want to check that option because chances are you've got it set to headset or it defaulted that way and that means it's pushing it to a source that doesn't exist. So. You might want to try it. It might be something that corrects the problem before you have to go take it somewhere and have it looked at. From the audio routing, if we go back, still in the sound settings, auto volume control. What this does is it increases the volume as my speed increases and it does it automatically for me. So I don't have to think about adjusting the volume when I'm getting on or off an interstate, as example. Next one down is equalizer. There are several preloaded equalizers in here. I currently run the custom one and I'm gonna let you see what that setup is. You can see all the setups there. My custom setup is I'm almost at the top on the 100, I'm almost at the top at the 350 hertz and I'm pretty much at the top for 1K, 3K and 10K. Speaker setup. You're only gonna use this if you have upgraded your stereo. Vox sensitivity, that's voice, so you do have the option, if you click this button right here, to talk to your phone. Talk to the thing that is, basically talk to the infotainment center and tell it to call someone or do whatever. This is the sensitivity for that. Next one down is display. So, there are three different displays on the Road Glide and Street Glide for 2024. One of those displays is Sport, and that's what I currently have. The next option is Tour Mode. The other option you have is Cruise. I choose Sport because Sport gives me everything that I need to see. I have the tachometer, I have my fuel gauge, I have the volt, and I have my miles per hour in the middle. That's the layout for the display auto day and night what that does is it dims the screen when you when it gets dark high contrast for all of you out there that are asking well how do i get my screen to turn white or my screen's white how do i get how do i get it to turn black this is the setting that does that all you got to do is go in and change it turn it on or turn it off and you will get the screen that you want so if i want the white screen all i do is push the menu button or you know the enter button in the middle and 
the screen turns white. They consider this high contrast. If I click it again, screen goes back to black. That's how you change that. System setting, units. This is pretty cool. If you're that person that travels up to like Canada on your motorcycle or down to Mexico, you can change your bike to show kilometers per hour and kilometers versus miles per hour and miles. Pretty cool feature. I'm glad Harley did that because my Road King did not have that. Bike function setup. This is where if you add any electrical accessories, say extra fog lights, fans, that kind of stuff, this is where once you install them, you will come and tell it that I want to continue so I can mark those things installed and have the bike recognize them. That's the only purpose for it. System info, this is just everything that goes with the bike. The product information, e-labels, copyright info. However, system info is where you can change your security pin. And when you do that, it'll ask you to enter a new pin. It asks you to enter it a second time. Once you do, you have a pin. And then factory reset. For those of you that are new to the Harley-Davidson Touring Models, they have a pin. And that pin is there in case your fob battery dies or you don't have your fob with you and you need to start your bike. When you go to turn it on and it doesn't recognize there is a fob present, it will ask for the pin. If you enter the pin, the bike will turn on and you can ride it as long as you want to ride it. You can do that repetitively. If you don't know what the default is, check the owner's manual or call the dealership you bought it from. Ride modes. This is a fun one. So the bike comes preloaded with road and you cannot turn that one off. If you notice, I'm able to turn off sport, custom and rain. I can uncheck those boxes and they will not be available to me. The only thing the bike will run in is road mode. If they're on, you can cycle through them by pushing your right turn signal to the left. That's what changes your mode. My custom setup. We'll go in and edit it. The first thing it asks you is, do you want to copy from another mode? I said yes. And so the mode I copied from was sport because I want the most performance I can get out of the motorcycle in my custom mode. The engine map, I have it set to sport. Engine braking, I have that set to the max that is possible. Throttle response, I have that set to the max that is possible. Traction control, I have that set to sport. Analog brake, I have set to road. You do not have the option to set that to sport. And that's it. That's how you set up. That's that's my custom mode, period. That's, that's how my custom mode is set up. And I can tell you right now, it runs way better than the sport mode does from the factory. That is all the main settings that happen under the cog. If you go to the bike symbol, that only gives you the option to turn infotainment on and off. The phone, that lets you add a phone to the bike. And I think when you add your phone to the bike this way versus using CarPlay you know, or an, that kind of thing, it's going to allow you to be able to pull up your contact list when you're in there. The next one's this. These are favorite. So you got media favorites. You have tuner favorites. And then you have contact favorites. So this is where you can build a list of everything that you would want to easily access using this thumb pad while you're riding down the road. The next one, navigation. This is one of my pet peeves with the 24s. I don't know who the hell at Harley Davidson thought it was a good idea to release what is a premier touring bike. And this applies to the street glide, the road glide, 
that doesn't come preloaded with navigation. Dumb move. Dumb move on Harley's part. They should have at least loaded the navigation system in it. Instead, what you have to do is this. You have to scan that QR code under the navigation button and pay about $300, I think, is what the cost is, to enable it on your motorcycle. The last two buttons are there that are there. One of them is CarPlay, and that does work. The other is HomeLink. So the bike comes pre-configured with HomeLink and can be programmed for up to, I think, two garage doors. You can't do it without buying a part to add to the bike first. Another gripe that I have with Harley. I, you know, I don't care if you don't, if you don't have it on the bike, don't show it. I think I showed you everything I promised to show you. I certainly have answered all the questions that I've been seeing on Facebook and other social media outlets. I hope you're getting out there riding. I hope you're getting out there hanging out with your friends. When you're out there, watch your ass. Juan and I almost got hit this past weekend when we were riding just two and a half, three days ago, Sunday. Today's Wednesday. Sunday, uh, some dude who didn't even fucking look. He just rolled right through a stop sign, pulled right out in front of me. And you know, fortunately, I was able to, I saw him. I was able to, was able to not get in an accident, thank God. But, you know, check on your friends. Like, subscribe, click the notification bell. Always ride safe. Yeah, ready? One, two, three, shoot. Ah. Asshole. Really? <laughs> Peace out, bitches! <laughs>